Hey, Andrea, you're asking about uh, refilling the 190SL cooling system. That does take a little bit of effort. Your biggest issue is you are trying to eliminate all the air pockets in the cylinder head and in the uh, high points of the, the cooling system. So be sure your uh, heater valves are open. Make sure you've got an accurate and functioning temperature gauge because they are very good when they are working. Um, we, we monitor ours at the 180 degree uh, temperature range and in, in here yours you'll probably be reading yours what Celsius I guess about 80 or 90 C. Um, anyway uh, you need to have this a uh, accurate and working because it's going to help tell you uh, how the uh, cooling system is being purged or how well it's being purged. Uh, we fill the uh, radiator with water only first and enough to uh, cover the uh, the cooling uh, fins down there uh, so that you can see water uh, above the, the the cooling tubes. Make sure the thermostat is in uh, correctly. It is possible to install the thermostat uh, backwards, but make sure it's in correctly. And as I say, we use cooling, we use water only to, for, to purge the system because one of the things that can happen is those air pockets will become superheated and then they will blow water out of the radiator in, in the form of a, a small geyser and, and can make a mess if you're not paying attention. So the, the uh, you got two people. One person here is monitoring the uh, cooling, the water inside the radiator. Uh, check uh, your cool, your uh, heating up here at the thermostat at, at the thermostat in the top radiator hose. Put your hand on the radiator. You'll be monitoring the uh, the temperature here and the uh, the temperature here by by feeling of things. And what you're doing is is um, watching. To make to find to see at the point where the bubbles are going to start to purge themselves, and what you'll notice in here is the water level will rise up, and you don't want it to rise up to the point where it starts to come out, and then eventually will make a small geyser. That's why someone is watching the temperature gauge. When you get to the uh, 180 uh, Fahrenheit range, and it starts to go up above that and starts to spike above uh, 180 to 190 shut the engine off uh, and then let the cooling system purge itself. Uh, you'll be able to hear it gurgling and uh, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes as the air starts to migrate uh, through the system. Uh, oh yeah, one of the handy hints on the uh, thermostat is to drill a small uh, bypass hole uh, like a 1 8 inch or maybe 3 or 4 millimeter uh, hole in the thermostat to where it allows helps allow bubbles to pass uh, through past the thermostat before it opens up so what you're going to do is um, let it cool down and then uh, you will start it again and watch for uh, once again the the uh, rise in, in water or the spike on the temperature gauge and you eventually your thermostat will open and you'll be able to see water flow uh, going through from here across and then down uh, the radiator you're also going to want to make sure you've got a, a um, Temperature differential when everything is when the radiator is closed up and in function uh, You want to make sure you got temperature differential from top to bottom of about 15 to 20 degrees So what's uh, once you have the uh, thermostat is open and you got water flowing through here uh, You may uh, have some uh, be sure to have some extra water on hand because uh, you once those air pocket pockets uh, purge themselves the water level will drop and once you've got water level stabilized you got the uh, the steam coming out of here you've got your cooling system uh, your your water is flowing put your radiator cap in place and uh, be sure to use a number uh, 100 radiator cap number 100 and put your radiator cap in place and pressurize the system and check for leaks once you are happy with the uh, cooling system drain the radiator just drain the radiator itself and then you will refill with your antifreeze. What we're using is the GO5. And you put the uh, undiluted GO5 right into the uh, uh, radiator. And then uh, put in as much as it will hold. And if need be, top off with a little water. And then start your car. Watch the, uh, once again, watch the uh, system moving water through here. And what's going to happen is the, the uh, undiluted GO5 is going to mix with the water in the block. And you have your proper 50-50 uh, mix of coolant and antifreeze. And um, then you can put your radiator cap on and you're ready to go. And it's uh, helpful.
helps to have two people. One person can do it, but you're running back and forth uh, inside. Uh, if I was to do it by myself, I would monitor the cool the temperature gauge, and as soon as the temperature gauge starts to look like it's going to spike, I shut the engine off and come out here and watch. Um, but again, the reason for the use of cool of water at the beginning is because it is uh, very likely that you will have uh, a geyser of water coming out and it's going to make a, a water mess, which is easy to clean up compared to uh, trying to uh, clean up uh, antifreeze. Hope this helps.